Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat for Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we start the second round of the playoffs in the Cup Series. We're coming 13 points to the good, so very excited to get going today. But first we have the Xfinity Series race where we had subscriber Donovan Robinson in the car starting as usual about midfield for our team as he went down that back straightaway, but he would be able to work his way forward, sure enough, as he came through at this point past the midway point of this race as he went down that back straightaway towards turn three and he came through now onto the final lap trying to run down the four of Ross Chastain, but he couldn't quite get there now as he came through on uh, the exit of the final corner down the straightaway to cross the line behind the four of Ross Chastain. He would get P7, so that's two top tens in a row for our team, which is very solid now as we come through, though, in the Cup Series qualifying. It was a pretty solid lap there as we actually beat our goal with a 23.125, and we qualify P5 here at Dover. So hopefully we can have a strong opportunity to run well today and increase that points buffer with Joey Logano on the pole. The playoffs continue at Dover International Speedway. This race marks the beginning of the round of 12. After four drivers were eliminated last week, the drivers are ready. Miles the Monster is ready. So pull up a chair. NASCAR Playoff Racing is coming up next. All right, thank you, Rick Allen. We're ready to go green here in Dover. Uh, Jamie and Rick Murray, one of the drivers that are happy with us, BJ McLeod, has been dominant all weekend. Somehow he's up here in the top 10 for qualifying. Uh, Bubba Wallace, he failed technical inspection, so he is starting at the back of the field now as we get ready to go green for this first race of the round of 12. We come into this round 13 points to the good, so we're definitely going to need to be on top of our game. Now as the green flag is out, and we are underway, Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, start on that front row. Kyle Busch has 10 wins on the season. Looking for win number 11 today he is. And now as, uh, as well as qualifying Kyle Busch has been great this season. There's actually make a, make a bit of a mistake in turns 1 allowing the two of Kozlowski to catch me off guard there as he got to my inside now as we lose a position on this opening lap so far as we go down into turn 3 uh, behind that, that 2 car of the inside of our SHR teammate of Eric Almarola. How much longer will he be as Stuart Haas Racing teammates? The real question here because certainly some rumors going around that we could be staying with the 41 next season. We could be on the 42 maybe uh, the one car could be tossed up in the mix as well now as we come through heading down at this bank straight away on the second lap we would sure enough get to the back of Brad Kozlowski as we came through now on uh, approaching the fourth lap looking to the left hand side of the two car as at this point Logano was driving away with the lead now as we come through the center of the corner we're actually going to go three wide with Kozlowski and Alex Bowman and Kozlowski backs out of that situation as we would go down into turn three side by side now with the 88 of Bowman but we would be able to clear him as as well and then set our sights on and now the 18 of Kyle Busch as Logano though he had continued to drive away from us but Kyle Busch was running up top quite a bit and that would allow me to get uh, even closer to him running this bottom lane now on lap 12 as we went down towards turn three the caution actually comes out here in Dover I could not find out who it was for it was not for Alex Bowman I should mention he decided to pit Kyle Busch pitted and so did Joey Logano so all of a sudden we find ourselves leading here about the midway point in stage one on a restart now, as the green flag is that we know we need to win stages. We need every playoff point possible, especially going into that next round of the round of eight. If we make it that far, now let's go down into turns one, clearing the two of Brad Kozlowski. The car certainly felt pretty tight on restarts, especially on the entrance to turn one, but that time I was able to keep it uh, down to the bottom pretty good now as we lead the way down into turns three. So obviously we were much faster than all the cars uh, behind us right now. The only two faster cars than us were really Joey Logano and Kyle Busch. So obviously this should be a great opportunity for us to win stage one as long as we don't go and make a really stupid mistake. So sure enough, you can see the gap already building uh, from myself to the cars behind of Denny Hamlin at this point who was running in that second position. Sure enough, we come to lap 23 of 29, Kurt Busch had moved up into the second position as we had continued to drive away from those guys behind us and then we came through on lap 25 and actually noticed that we were not going to make it on field. We only had four laps of field with about five laps to go in the stage. Now as we came through to four to go, the next lap later down into turn three, the caution would actually come out and save us because now we get a caution. The stage would be ended by that yellow flag and we would get a playoff point. Our first win in this, or our first stage win of the playoffs now as you would pit, pit for two games hands of fuel four tires and get ready to go green as we would hold on to the lead because Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Alex Bowman, who all pitted under the last caution, uh, had to come back into the pit lane anyway. So we lead here at the start of stage two. 
behind us, you see the 19 of Truex and the 9 of Chase Elliott getting up in the mix on that second row. As we have Kurt Busch there on our outside as we make a little bit of contact on that apron, and that slows up my momentum now as the one car is going to be side by side with us down this back straightaway. Kurt Busch obviously used to drive this 41 car, so you know he probably would love to beat us right now as we come through turns 3. And out of turns 4, Busch looks to have the edge, but we make a little bit of contact there on the exit of the 4th turn, crossing that line. Kurt Busch leads the lap by about uh, just over half a car length as we go down into the corner. Truex and Elliott side by side for that third position. Now is Kurt Busch certainly not going to give up easy here on these opening laps of the second stage. Certainly can't blame him. Now as we go down into turn 3, still side by side, giving it off the apron, but Kurt goes all the way to the top, and that allows me to easily clear him on the exit of turn 4. Three wide behind us, they would go, and Martin Truex Jr. would hold on to the second position as we actually got into the wall there on the exit of turn two, now on lap three, and put some damage on the car immediately. I felt it as I went down into turn three. The car got really tight, and that allowed Ryan Newman, who gets to my inside as I got loose on the exit of turn four. The car was all over the place at this point, out of nowhere, as I just pushed up too much on the exit of turn two, hit the wall, and we had fallen all the way down to the eighth position within the next handful of laps now, as well getting passed by Kyle Busch, as it was Kurt Busch now leading the way. Now it was Truex had fallen back quite a bit, and we came through, though, on lap 10, looking to the inside of Truex. For some reason, the car just started to come back to me. We had climbed back up all the way now into P6, passing our teammate of Kevin Harvick now on lap 12 in the stages. Case Elliott had now taken the lead at this point here in Dover. But certainly a simple mistake on my part. It was a huge setback here in stage two as it came to 14 to go. Now looking up the inside of the 17 of Ricky Sinos Jr. trying to make a pass on him as we come through out of turns two side by side. He's not going to give it up quite easy. It's not every day you see Stenhouse uh, running this far up the field now as we go down into turn three, though we would be able to clear Stenhouse as he had driven all the way up to that uh, middle lane, and that would allow me to take the position on the exit of turns four. Uh, so we would continue to just move our way back forwards, just recovering from this damage that we picked up here. Now as we only had nine laps of field in the car, at this point, so I was kind of hoping for a caution again. Now, as it came through on lap 24, seven to go in the stage, we had now run down Kyle Busch, getting him up right in our windshield. Now, as there's actually trouble ahead, there's a car on the outside wall, and that brings out the caution that we were hoping for. As we only had two laps of fuel in the car at this point, Chase Elliott leads as we actually got hit from behind there under caution, but we would pit, would pit for two cans of fuel, four tires, get ready to go green from P5. As Elliott actually lost the lead on the pit lane to Denny Hamlin, as a green flag is back out here in Dover and it will be four laps remaining here on this restart as Elliott looks to have the edge outside seems to have the edge going down into turns one on these restarts here today in Dover but through the center of the corner and on the exit certainly they seem to fall off now as we go down this back straightaway side by side at this point uh, with Ricky Stenos Jr. we would hold on to P5 but that was as far as I could get I just didn't quite have the speed I needed as now Chase Elliott fell down to P3 behind Kyle Busch as Kurt Busch he goes all the way to the top on this final lap now in this second stage Denny Hamlin leads away down into turn Turns three. Hamlin only has what one win this season, I believe, uh, compared to last season in our crew mode. He hasn't had a very good one. Now as we exit turn four, heading down the front straightaway, we cross the line to get P5 in the stage. Danny Hamlin with the playoff point, which will definitely uh, help him going into that round of eight if he makes it that far. So no one was coming to the pit lane at the end of stage two, so we would stay out and get ready to go green from the fifth position. Chase Elliott in P3. He has run a lot stronger recently in our career mode. His first uh, half a, half the season didn't go exactly how he would prefer. Now as the green flag is out in the third and final stage is underway. So we're going to certainly have to watch out for that nine because he's been contending for victories. We barely beat him at Watkins Glen for the victory. And then he was obviously uh, in the mix recently at the roll. Didn't quite get it. Now he's come through three. Why there is Kozlowski caught me off guard and turns one again as the car just pushed up on the restart. And we have a terrible first half a lap to start this stage getting split three wide in the middle. Larson, he went by on the inside. We dropped from fifth down to P. 10 here on this opening lap of this third and final stage nearly making contact with the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now is Larson in the 42 uh, trying to put some pressure on Kevin Harvick. Obviously Larson won this race in real life uh, so we know that Kyle Larson has a lot of speed every time we come to Dover. It's probably one of his best tracks on the NASCAR schedule now as Truex is on the outside and we try to get to him but we, once again I just push up the track there as the car felt a lot tighter at the beginning of this third and final stage here as we run P9 as we cross the line with 36 laps to go, but we would continue running about P9 or so. We had actually gone past 42 of Larson, who had started to fall off, but we were still battling, like I said, in around that 9th, uh, 10th position as a caution actually comes out here with 27 laps to go. Hanlon still leading. We would pit for two cans of fuel, four tires, and get ready
ready to go back green here with Elliott now actually overtaking Halen on the pit lane. So this could be huge for Elliott because once he lost that lead, he couldn't get it back. But now his pit crew has given him the lead with 23 laps to go. Chase Elliott still hasn't won the season as Bowman takes it three wide on the restart. Elliott looking to punch his ticket into that round of eight. There's made a little bit of contact with Stenhouse briefly getting into the wall. These restarts certainly have not treated us great today here in Dover. Now as we go down into turn three, Stenhouse up ahead side by side with the two of Keselowski. Certainly Stenhouse has been up inside the top 10 most of this race, so he definitely has some legitimate speed here today as now we came through on uh, down into turns one behind Keselowski. Hamlin and Kurt Busch all the way to the top, to the center of the corner. Definitely not the best idea from them as we would get to that inside and we started moving forward again, uh, forwards again. We passed Bowman, we passed Truex. Now we were working on uh, 20 laps ago, passing the two of Keselowski's. Kyle Busch had actually just taken the lead from Chase Elliott. So now Elliott would be able to rally back and take the lead from Kyle Busch again as we continued to make passes. We had passed Kurt Busch now as we were hitting just 15 laps to go here. And at Dover, we had gotten to the inside of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with nine laps to go at this point now and we had been able to make a pass on him but he's actually going to fight back as we clear him though on the exit of turn two thankfully as we went down this back straight away so we continued moving forwards now as we came to just five laps to go Elliot back out in front as we get right to the back of Denny Hamlin at this point working through lap traffic now as we're hoping kind of just for a caution if we're going to be able to do anything now as Hamlin runs in that fourth position and Logano was in P2 trying to put the pressure on Chase Elliott there as we came through now on lap 97 Hamlin up to the top there as we come out of turns four side by side with the Toyota driver for Joe Gibbs Racing. There you see Brendan gone just up ahead as I kind of use Brendan as a pick to get him in the way of Hamlin and I get to the inside and we take that fourth position away in these closing laps here in this first race of the round of 12 now as we would come through now with just two laps to go out of turns two. Jimmy Johnson's having issues there in the 35th position as it looks like he's blowing a tire. The caution comes out coming to the white flag as there's a chance Jimmy Johnson might have just costed his teammate his first win of the season. Elliott will lead at the start of the restart. We will line up in the fourth position as the first race of the round of 12 will be decided by an overtime finish. So obviously anything can go uh, or go wrong here as we're going to try and do whatever we can to maybe get to that bottom and see what we can do now. Is I was kind of committed right here at least on this restart to try and push to 22 not only to help his chances but to help mine now as the green flag is out and overtime is underway. Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott on that bottom lane. Logano has a better restart. I give him just a little bit of a nudge down into turns one but not what I was hoping for as I was hoping to get him way out front to increase my chances now as we come out of turns two side by side with the 18 of Kyle Busch Elliott leads down the back straightaway side by side though he is with Logano who goes all the way to the top as we make a little bit of contact with Kyle Busch and that destroyed my chance there in turn three and at turn four but now it's going to come down to Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch as a white flag is in the air the field icon comes on but that does not matter as we slice to the inside of the 22 of Joey Logano's Kyle Busch goes even higher now as we might be three wide but no Kyle Busch stays clear of Logano Elliott is in the clear as long as he doesn't make a big mistake down in turns three and it turns four for the final time we come through the center of the corner Bush up top we're three wide with him and Logano now as we make contact and we're sliding through on the exit of turns four Elliott wins as we cross the line to finish in the sixth position here in Dover Chase Elliott gets win number one on the season and locks himself into the round of twelve or into the round of eight. Sorry, so he will now have a chance to make it to the final four for the first time in his Monster Energy uh, Cup Series career. And there is you see the finishing order. Jimmy Johnson brought out that final caution, so it looked like that might have been Chase's biggest issues. We're thirty three points to the good now after uh, Dover, as I said after the race. Solid day for us, which will be big. Uh, going into Talladega in the next episode. We've obviously haven't had the greatest performances at play tracks in our career. And now as we have a 33 point buffer to work with, uh, the confidence certainly uh, goes a, a lot higher. Uh, I was a little concerned what the points were going to look like, but now we can go into Talladega and not worry too much now as there's still going to be a little bit of worrying. But as always, if you guys did enjoy this episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very appreciated. But before we go, we're going to see uh, another updated playoff grid. As I actually had some contract options available, I chose Hendrick as a potential candidate for next season. But we might have some more news coming on our next season team in the next episode in Talladega, or maybe by the end of this round, hopefully there. As you see the playoff grid now, uh, as uh, those were obviously uh, the four eliminated last time, and then here it is uh, updated for after Dover. There you see the four, all three of them are teammates, so they got some work to do, and hopefully they can make it in. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching, and have a great day, everybody.